Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good? Think you can handle this 20 minute sermon about to come? Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Um, I first wanted to start um, thanking the Peace and Justice Committee, um, Peggy Mish. Peggy Mish. There you go. Thank you so much <laughs> for choosing Student Action Farm Workers to come talk today. Um, thank you, Barbara, for having been um, just so nice and have had really good conversations back there. Um, and thank you, Reverend Tom. Um, he's also been really great and making me feel really comfortable and at home here. Um, can everybody hear me, just to make sure? Okay. All right. Um, so before I speak about myself, um, I would like to refer to talk a, lot, a little bit about student action with farm workers, and, um, and then I'll tell you guys and share how I fit in that big picture. Um, so the history of SAF traces back to 1970s with the Migrant Project, which was led by students and professors um, at Duke. Um, Student Action with Farm Workers came to be uh, a nonprofit organization in 1992, um, thanks to Caroline Corey, uh, who was an intern um, back in 1990. Um, the goal since then has been to bring farm worker community, advocate organizations, and students, both at the high school and college level, to organize and advocate for farm worker justice to bring a greater understanding of where our food comes from and the hands that labor them. We bring awareness. Oh, you know, I just remember. I didn't set up my timer. Just give me a second, because if not, I'll just continue talking the whole morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can definitely do that. Okay, there we go. Um, oh, yes. So, yeah, so we try to bring great understanding where our food comes from and who labors them. Um, we bring awareness by giving presentations to various communities, such as the, this one, uh, participating in various media outlets, such book publications, documentaries, theater projects that are later made available to organizations um, in the web and to the general public. We send announcements through listservs with information about events going on in the farm worker community, such as celebrations, rallies, and campaigns. We support farm labor unions, organizing such as Flock and the R.J. Reynolds tobacco um, campaign, sorry. SAP actually took um, all the interns and the fellows um, to participate in a protest here in Chapel Hill um, at the Kangaroo Station on Estes uh, back in July um, to put pressure on R.J. Reynolds and the Kangaroo and the pantry convenience stores to negotiate better wages and working conditions with Flock. Furthermore, SAF fuels the farm worker movement with students and future leaders through programs such as Levante Leadership Institute, Into the Fields Internship, and Sowing Seeds for Change Fellowship. And this is where I fit into the huge, large, bigger picture of what SAF is. I am a Sowing Seeds for Change Fellow, a, a six-month program. I was placed in Piedmont Health Services at Monkey Community Health Center as a health outreach worker um, where um, yeah, back in June, um, while other interns were working in long-term goals such as law and enforcement through lobbying, education, and working as paralegals, I was and, and still am helping to address the immediate health needs of farm workers in Harnett, Chatham, Moore, and Lee County. Pretty much what I do is visit farm workers at their homes in the evenings when they get home from work. We talk about health risks that 
that are related to their work, such as pesticide exposure, heat illness, um, and I see a lot of tobacco farm workers, so we talk a lot about green tobacco sickness, and I see a lot of it too, um, which means I see a lot of people all the time. Um, uh, we visit seasonal families. Um, these are people who live in the area all year round, and they sometimes work in crops, sometimes they find jobs around the area that are not related to farm work. Um, we visit migrant workers. These are uh, people who travel with, uh, with the crops. Um, these might be from county to county or like um, from state to state. And then what I tend to see the most are H2A workers. Um, these are Mexican, um, Mexican men who come with a temporary visa to work with a farmer. Um, and hold on. Yes. Um, and primarily, what I see are tobacco farm um, farm workers because here, as you may know, North Carolina has a lot of tobacco. Uh, but I also see farm workers who work in strawberry fields, um, soybeans. Um, blueberries, and in nurseries. Now, concerning the farm work conditions in North Carolina, I can give you a bunch of numbers and stats and figures, but um, I will only really talk about what I have observed as a health outreach worker and the visits that I have paid to these farm workers um, at their homes. Um, I first want to start recognizing that the farm workers um, that there are farm worker, farmers, I'm sorry, that there are farmers who are great employers. Um, they provide their workers with water, breaks, mostly when the temperatures are too high or too low. Um, they provide their workers with proper personal protection equipment, such as gloves and um, permeables. Um, they give them fair wages. Uh, they give them good housing, uh, provide them with transportation whenever they need it. Um, treat their workers with respect and um, dignity. However, I can say that with my, my own experience has been that um, I have, these observations haven't been consistent um, or prominent throughout the various camps that I have visited. Um, in North Carolina, we have 150,000 100, uh, field workers um, along with their families, and it is estimated that we actually have more than this um, uh, and according to Flock's research, um, about 90% of these workers are undocumented. Therefore, um, their status tends to present a problem when negotiating better wages and working conditions. And finally, um, undocumented workers can't always receive workers' compensation um, if they get, res they get injured in the job. Um, and it's not just undocumented workers who get taken advantage of, but it's also H-2A workers. Um, and they also receive uh, bad housing conditions, low pay, literal, um, limited transportation, um, limited workers' compensation, um, limited access to health care. Uh, workers' violations can be, uh, I have heard of stories of farm workers working until like 1 o'clock in the morning when they left um, to work at 5 o'clock in the, um, the morning, so 5 o'clock to like 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, I've heard of farm workers telling me that they don't get breaks. Um, so generally, the uh, farm workers will receive a break around 10 a.m., um, and a lot of them tell me they, that sometimes um, their supervisor um, will get mad even if they take a break to just get water. Um, um, and other violations have been that I've also heard and actually saw, saw a video of a farmer um, spreading pesticides or spraying pesticides while the farm workers were there. Um, a farm worker showed me the video and I immediately referred him to Flock. 
um, because this is a huge violation of the rights of the farm workers. Um, and yeah, um, so those are the kinds of things that I've seen. Um, I, I've talked to, uh, I interviewed this guy uh, for one of my projects and I, I really liked him, he was a really nice guy and I really liked him because um, I saw that he got along really well with his um, farmer and he's like, yeah, he's like, um, we're like brothers. And I'm like, oh, like, that's pretty awesome. He's like, yeah, he treats us really well. And as I'm hearing him say this, um, I look at his home. He lives in a barrack um, with among 17 other guys. Um, the barrack was used to be like a hog farm, and now it was now made it into a concrete house. Um, and so, in this one huge room, they have about 18 guys all living together, all the beds together. Um, and a way that they get privacy is that between the beds, they have um, cloth hanging so they can get some privacy. And um, the kitchen, it could be better. Um, the um, So I, I look at him and he says that he gets treated really well by his farmer, but as an outsider, um, I look at his housing condition and um, I just really, really question um, how well his farmer really treats him. Um, and yeah, um, yeah, and what's interesting, he's been working with his farmer for 19 years and the house seems to be the same since then um, with all the guys uh, clustered in one room. And this is not just this guy's um, story, but this tends to be a lot of farm workers' story. A lot of them are clustered in into a trailer, six guys in one trailer, um, uh, beds even just in the living room um, because they can't all fit in the, the supposedly bed, um, bedrooms that there are. Um, so I, I see a lot of uh, bad housing conditions um, among the other working condition violations. Um, another problem that I've seen and that um, really gets in the way of what I do um, is that a big part of my job is to get farm workers um, that need medical attention to receive medical attention. This means that um, the farm workers need to get from their field or from the camp to the clinic. The problem is that a lot of the H2A workers don't drive, uh, so they're wholly dependent on their farmer to transport them to wherever they need to go, which is get food or go to the clinic. Um, so the farmer under the contract is supposed to provide transportation, uh, whether it's that he drives or he assigns a driver um, or and gives a truck. And I've had a lot of problems getting farm workers who need medical attention to the clinic because um, a lot of farmers tell me that they are busy and I, I'm sure they are very much, but, um, but it doesn't help me get the farm worker the medical attention that he needs. Um, and so this really only adds one more barrier um, to uh, that impedes farm workers from accessing health. Um, so as you can see, uh, there are a lot of grievances in the farm worker communities um, and in the lives, in many areas of the life um, that need to change. And that's exactly what um, what organizations such as Student Action with Farm Workers and Flock and North Carolina Farm, farm Worker Health Program and Legal Aid in North Carolina um, and many other farm worker organizations um, are fighting along with farm workers to make these changes. And um, I'm sure all you guys just want to go out with me and do farm worker health, you know, but. Um, <laughs> That'll be that'll take a long time to train you, you know. But um, what I'm trying to say is that the best way I can honestly see this community helping um, 
organizations like SAF and Flock um, is to provide support, um, and support can be in various ways. Um, uh, like for us, uh, I can't stand up here and not really promote my own organization. Um, Student Action with Farm Workers has truly been a unique and awesome experience. Um, I can honestly say that all the directors and board of just everybody who belongs to Student Action with Farm Workers is truly like dedicated and loves what they do. Um, and not only that, are they like passionate for what they do, but um, I've also seen the way that SAV has transformed um, the class that I was with, um, the class of 2014 uh, summer internship. Um, and I just want to sh just share with you just really the kind of impact that SAV has um, and why you should support SAV. Um, I want to share the story of Jesse Bustos. Um, she was uh, she grew up in a farm worker family. She uh, started working in, in the farm fields and blueberry fields when she was eight, and then she shared that she really hated it, and then that only encouraged her to work really hard at school uh, so that she could get out of that life. Um, so she didn't fall into that and those statistics of the farm worker children who drop out. Um, she graduated from St. Edwards University with a degree in global, global studies with a concentration in Latin America. Um, this summer she came to, um, to North Carolina from Texas uh, to work in the field, um, to work into the, into the field's um, internship where she was placed to work in RTI International um, to do research. So after this, she actually, like while she was still in her internship, she got a job offer with legal aid from North Carolina, of North Carolina, um, a nonprofit law firm that helps to provide services to low-income families. Um, and she really loves what she's gonna be doing. Um, she like what what's her passion is to give back to her community, her farm worker community. So, um, yeah, and like this is really all thanks to Seth. Um, sorry, um, that that they connect to her, they give her the opportunities, open the doors, train her, um, introduce her to the farm worker network, um, and she found you know a little w a place where she fits in very well. Um, so that's Jesse, and um, you actually can look her up in NC Policy Watch. Uh, they interviewed for a little bit, and you can read a little bit more about what she did in the field. Um, and then, you know, just to add more, um, you know, thanks to staff, a rural community um, in North Carolina um, that one of my friends belongs to. <laughs> um, she is going to know about farm workers, the neighbors that live right beside them, um, because she said she hadn't, she, before this program, she didn't know about the conditions that farm workers lived in, and that, you know, she's going to go back and talk to her church and talk to her community, community about who are, her, who are their neighbors and what do they do. And that only, like, any time, every time that we have a class, we have these group of people who branch out and impact their communities. Um, and then again, there we see again SAF just really transforming our communities. And um, and so yeah, um, so I guess what I'm trying to get to is um, a way that you guys can help the farm worker. Uh, movement is, you know, help us recruit students who are, who can find passion in farm worker um, advocacy. Um, I know this is a older age crowd, but I'm sure you have children. <laughs> <laughs> children, um, maybe uh, in college, who would love to do some service project or just be involved with the community. Um, 
you know, tell them to try it out and see and see if they really love it as much as we have. Um, and and another way you guys can uh, be part of the farm worker movement is um, by talking to your uh, representatives um, and let them know what you think is important and what should be be a conversation in the general assembly more often. Um, so don't worry, we actually uh, the it, the Farm Worker Advocacy Network has worked it out for you. All that you really have to do is um, go to Harvest of Dignity Campaign, um, just Google it, and there um, you can sign postcards that you can send to your uh, representative um, demanding for safe places to live, safe places to work, and strong enforcement of our existing laws. So you get these postcards for free, um, and you can bring them in here and have everybody sign them and send them off. Um, just let in the, 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 your representatives know that uh, this is an issue that should be spoken more about. And um, also, another way you can be involved is in Flock's R.J. Reynolds tobacco campaign. Um, if you choose to go rally and protesting at Kanguru, sorry, <laughs> I don't know, you should talk to Flock, but um, we have a less extreme way to do it, if you choose to or if you want to. Um, and that is, you can write a letter to R.J. Reynolds um, and actually, Flock has already already has a, a, a letter that you can um, download, drafted for you that you can use. Um, so visit Flock and look up the R.J. Reynolds campaign. Um, again, uh, bringing to attention all these problems that we're seeing um, to these major companies. And. Uh, Furthermore, there's a lot of little ways that you guys can be part of. Um, and, sorry, and we will have a table outside in the Jones Building. Yes. Sorry. We have a little table in the Jones Building um, where you guys can learn more about all these different campaigns and different ways that you guys can be involved. Um, thank you so much for listening to me ramble the whole time, but um, thank you for inviting as again, Student Action with Farm Workers to come speak with you guys and share um, a little bit of what we do. So.